What is up, YouTube? I'm Landon Whittles, and I just wanted to talk about some things about the Baltimore Orioles today. Now, I know there hasn't really been much going on too recently, and I'm a little bit late to the whole trade, but the biggest thing to come out of the Orioles uh, preseason kind of is the Corbin Burns trade. So the Orioles traded Joey Ortiz, D.L. Hall and future picks to the Milwaukee Brewers in return for Corbin Burns. Now, I think this is a great deal for the Baltimore Orioles as they were badly in need of an ace. Yes, Bradish was their ace last year and he's done a phenomenal job. However, I think they needed just one more veteran guy to kind of to kind of put them over the top. As we saw in the playoffs, the team really didn't have much success. Uh, pitching wise I mean offense really didn't do too much either but it was just a whole lack of experience kind of thing now yes they have the experience now but just having that guy that's been there before helps and he's won a Cy Young I mean he's definitely a big addition to this roster now uh, as the as for the people we traded away I believe they were great players, and I, I did like them. I think Ortiz was a phenomenal defender and av average at best hitter, and I think he will provide some value to the, to Milwaukee. Now, if he starts for them at any point in the season, uh, that's up in the air. And for D.L. Hall, I think the Orioles really made the right move by taking him from a starter and putting him to more of like a long relief position, which I think he really flourished in uh, later in the season. Now, the picks don't really matter. Do I think those are big losses for the Orioles? Not really. I think D.L. Hall's a bigger loss than Ortiz was because of the depth we have at infield. Like, we will have Jackson Holiday potentially making his MLB debut this season as he's in AAA. Uh, we did lose Adam Frazier uh, in free agency, which I don't think is a big loss either. But then we, have, we still have Ramon Rios. We have Jorge Mateo, Gunnar Henderson. Uh, over at first base, we have Mountcastle, um, along with many others. Uh, these people, uh, Westberg even, these players all have the ability to kind of play anywhere on the infield. I mean, for the exception of Ryan Mountcastle, but they can all play all around the infield and fly around. And I just think Ortiz was just that depth that kind of we just needed to trade, and we did, and I think it'll pay off big. Now, for Corbin Burns, he was phenomenal. He's been, had a phenomenal career. Last year was a bit of a down year, and obviously it's hard to back up a Cy Young campaign. But I do think he can bounce back and return to that Cy Young form again with the Baltimore Orioles as they have shown they can take bad pitchers from other teams and turn them into stars. So I, I can only wait to see what they do with a star and what they make him. And for when the Orioles get to the playoffs, I think he should be the number one guy. Now we will see what the season holds. We'll see how Bradish, Grayson, Means, and all them do. But I think he should be the number one guy just because he has that experience. Now look at the Orioles' rotations now. I think this is easily a top 10, maybe top 7 rotation in the league. I mean, you have Corbin Burns, Kyle Bradish, who just came off a 2.83 ERA season. Um, Grayson Rodriguez, who once he came back up, was lights out phenomenal for the most part. John Means, once he came returned from injury, he was insane. I mean, he against the Guardians, he took a no-hitter into the seventh inning. And then even Dean Kramer posted a sub-3.5 ERA last season, which is incredible, and he has only continued to impress. So this rotation is something dangerous, and I believe the Orioles team is something dangerous, and this trade is exactly what they needed to happen. And now it's time to talk extension. Obviously, Corbin Burns is on the last year of his deal, and the Brewers knew that trading him away. I believe the Orioles should extend Corbin Burns, especially if he plays well. Obviously, we'll have to wait to see how he does during the season and how he performs, but I think he has the ability to be a long-term pitcher for the Baltimore Orioles. I think they could give him potentially a five- to six-year extension. 
along with some other players on their roster, which I'll talk about late, eventually in the future, as we get closer to potential contracts being completed. But as far as Corbin Burns go, I think the Orioles should extend him just because they haven't had that guy in a long, long time. So for the ability for, for them to potentially keep him for a long time and have that ace for a long time would be huge for the Orioles and for many potential World Series runs to come in the future. Obviously, there are other pitchers on the roster that I could see being the ace, such as Bradish or Rodriguez or even Means, who was our ace until he got hurt. But Corbin Burns just has that next kind of upper echelon talent that the Orioles have been lacking for a long time. And I really think he, I, I really do believe this trade kind of puts them over the top and puts them in that upper tier of teams. Yes, were they the number one seed last year in the, uh, in the American League? Yes. Were they one of the best teams in the regular season? Yes. But they just didn't have that playoff experience to kind of put them into that upper echelon of teams. Many didn't even consider them to be one of the best teams, yet even though they won the AL East and were first in the American League. But now I believe they kind of fit that role that a lot of the other teams have with that big number one ace. And in, in order for them to do that, they need to give him a lot of money. Now, obviously, the Orioles are under new ownership now, and things are still being finalized. But hopefully these new owners are, be, are going to be willing to spend the money that the previous owner, Angelos, was not. And that's about it.